Hey crafters, it's me Jen Evers with Koality Crafts and I'm starting off with this board that says shipping starts at $6. So I wanted to say this up front because sometimes people forget or we get new friends and I want them to be in the know and aware of how we run our sales. Our sales run every two weeks from Saturday to the next Saturday, so every other Saturday. Shipping starts at $6, which means we'll do a poly bag for $6 for anything under one pound. After that, we go into a priority flat rate envelope, medium box, and large box. So right now, medium boxes are $15.05, larges are $21.10, and the envelopes are $8.40. So make sure that you're writing down all of the things that you purchase since we don't, um, we aren't going to itemize at this point. And um, I think that's it. So if you need to go over the rules, if you've never been to a sale, you're wondering how to do it, please, please go to koalitycrafts.com. The full sale details are there. They're in written format and they're in video format. So hopefully that will be able to cover everybody and you guys will understand what's going on. If not, hey crafters, it's me, Jenny Riz with Quality Crafts. Feel free to um, send me a message or send Penny a message. There's lots of places that you can do that. Qualitycrafts.com. No, qualitycrafts at gmail.com. You'll get a hold of me. Um, Penny has her own email address. She usually gives that out during, during sales and stuff. Um, so do not be afraid to ever ask a question. And let's move on with the um, candy dispenser. So this is what we're creating today. My inspiration from this came from Split Coast Stampers. Frenchie the Stamper, you guys probably have heard of her. Um, it's linked down below if you want to see her video. Uh, I did one in actual Valentine's paper with a cute little bow. And then I did one just for a different look so you can see what else you could do with it. I used my, um, oh, what am I trying to think of? Dun, dun. My airbrush on that one to create that really cute flower and to create the spray, the spray paint background that you see. Okay, and then the two little flowers are just wooden flowers. I spray painted, um, airbrushed, not spray painted, airbrushed. And then I added some little flower gems. Okay, so super cute. This little flap pops out like this so that you can see your candy and your candy can come out. It's got a little bit of a ridge so it won't fall out unless you pull it all the way out. And then this one also has the same thing. A little bit different candy in that one. This one has the little mini, um, what are they called? Bottle caps and this one has Skittles. So let me move these guys out of the way. I always like to see what I'm making first. And I'm gonna tell you, this one is not super duper easy. You really have to pay attention. So I took the directions that I got from her and I'm gonna try to make them as su super easy as I can. This is what we're going to end up with. This is what it's gonna end up looking like. And I can see already I'm gonna have to put a couple of marks in here. We're gonna eventually end up cutting off this piece and I'm just gonna make big X's. These are the pieces that are gonna get cut off. This rounded piece right here, this little rounded piece. I'm gonna walk you through it all, but I know it helps me to be able to see what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So I'll try to pull this back out so you can see it. All these pieces are getting cut. Do you see that? I think I'm gonna sneeze, hold on a second. Okay, it's not coming. <laughs> We're gonna start out. Just get out your full your um, score, whatever kind of score you have, and a piece of paper that is eight and a half by nine. So no, you do not need a twelve by twelve piece of paper for this. You can use any eight and a half by eleven cardstock that you have. The sturdier the cardstock, the sturdier your box. I actually used um, like a pattern paper here. And it did, it's holding up just fine, but it's not as nice and heavy as this one. This one, like, is rock solid. This is a 110 pound cardstock, and it's Nina 110 pound cardstock, so it works wonderfully. Just for the demo here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. It's kind of thin. I want you to be able to see all the marks, and I just thought maybe the white one wouldn't be as easy to see. So let's try this out. Again, this is what it looks like after it's been totally scored. 
So I think what I'll do is maybe I'll use my, after I score it, I'll make it with the black marks so that you can see it just like this one as we progress, okay? We're gonna start with the eight and a half inch across the top. That's really important. The eight and a half inch across the top because we're gonna score at two, four, six, and eight, okay? Eight and a half inch across the top, we're gonna score at two, four, six, eight. All right, I'm gonna hopefully be able to stay in that groove and show you where I'm, what I've done here. Two, four, six, and eight. Super easy to see so far, right? Then we're gonna turn it, so here's our eight side. We're gonna turn it one side to the right, okay, so that your little half inch is at the bottom. Now, the reason why I'm going over this and because this was difficult for me to make. <laughs> I wanna make sure that my directions are super clear. Keep that little um, half inch on the bottom when we do this, because this is what we're gonna do, one, three, six and a half, and eight and a half. So let me tell you again, one, three, six and a half, and eight and a half. So now if we did that right, we should have two little half inch on either side. Let me go ahead and mark that out. We did a one. A six and a half and an eight and a half. There is a chance I might mess up, so make sure you're watching this all the way to the end. So if I have to do any fixes, you could you could go with me and not waste your paper, okay? Alright, then the last thing we have to do, we're gonna turn it back that left hand turn. Make sure that our little half inch is on the top and the right. See that? And then we need this little score line right here and the right here. They're both at the five and a half inch mark. The difference is, is that at the top here, you're gonna go to five and a half and you're gonna mark that all the way to the second line. You're gonna go to this first line here, keep going to the second line and then make sure you've got it there. To get the one on this side, normally I would like to just flip it over like this. Um, I want you to be able to see the lines though. So basically, um, if you flip it over like this, okay, it's gonna be a different, it's gonna be a different um, counter. It's gonna be a different number and that's gonna be really confusing. So while we're on this side and we're doing this one right here, I'm gonna mark it, okay? And then, so we can stay at this five and a half mark, we're just gonna flip this up, bear with me. I'm just gonna flip this up here Go back to our five and a half and just go down to the first score line that we have. And then as I have that up there, I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm just gonna indent that in right where it was and make my mark so that you can see clearly where that went. I hope that was clear. So you have, this is the part that gets me messed up. So I wanna make darn sure I have this right for you. Up in the right hand corner here, you should have a square and then an extra line. Okay, and our little half inch marks are on the side and on the top. And then at the bottom here, you should have a little tab here, and that's it. We're just making sure we got this five and a half mark and this five and a half mark. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, from where we're at, leave it in the same position. This extra little mark we have here, we're gonna get rid of all of this. Just so you can see it clearly, we're getting rid of all, all of this up to that tab that we made. Okay, so don't cut off any of this tab. We're just going to cut off that big piece right there. So go ahead. Hi, Arrow. Go ahead and cut this piece off. If you want to use your, um, your cutter, your trimmer to make your lines straighter, go right ahead. I'm just gonna cut this out by following my marks. All right, so now when we look, this whole part, that whole part is gone. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to cut out is we're going to cut out this square and this square. Those two little squares. Go ahead and chop those off. Follow along with me and be real careful because I tell you, it, it tripped me up. I made four or five of these before I finally got the hang of it. And I kept messing up the scores. So I'm really hoping that we hit the jackpot on this one and that you guys are able to put this together the first try. So those two little pieces came off. I'm going to put this back up here. Okay. So our big crisscross piece is gone. These two, these are also crisscrosses. I don't bet you can't see those. These two crisscrosses are gone. And now we're going to make our little tabs in this corner. So this corner right here. We're just going to, if you've ever done these kind of things before, we're just going to make sure that these three things become little tabs by cutting off the corner, okay? And then cutting this little line so you can cut off this corner. Do you see how it made that little tab? Same thing with this one. Just go ahead and cut off these two corners and then also this one. Okay, so what you should have left is the little box top, actually it's the top of the box with the three tabs. If you're at all lost, let me know. Give me a holler right now before I move on. Hopefully this is making total sense. So we've done this whole top part right here. Okay, this whole middle part we don't have to worry about right now. This whole middle part, so we're going to cover that up. We're not doing that just yet. Okay, I'm watching for people to holler, so all in caps, use my name so that I can check it out. The next thing we're going to do, remember this little 5 inch extra little score mark we did? We're going to cut off all of these three that follow behind that. Leave that little tab there and just cut off these three pieces. They have, they're all X'd out. Just those three for now and then we'll move on. Don't cut off that little tab. All right, so here we are. This is where we're at. We've cut off those little X's. That big X is gone. Those two corners are gone. Okay, I'm gonna scoot this up. The next one that's gone is this one right here. So from the edge, you count one, two, one, two, it's this one. If you don't wanna make a, make a mistake, this one, and then there's one, two, three. So this one, one, two, three. I ended up on the same one, so I know that's definitely the one that I wanna cut off. Right there. Just cut that whole square right out of there. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay this back down. We have cut off all the pieces that were appropriate, right? And then on this side, if we scoot this over, this piece right here needs to go. This is the part that I don't want to mess up. That whole piece. I'm not quite sure about that. I think that's an ending piece that I messed up on the first time. So let's go ahead and cut our um, little corners first just to make darn sure that's what we're going to do. So we're making two little tabs, a tab here and a tab here, right on this little corner piece. So we're going to do the same thing we did before by like cutting off the little corners. So cut this one up the side and cut a little or triangle out of there and then go to the other side. Take off a piece there. And then cut that one down, take off a little piece there. There was one piece that no matter how many times I made it, it came out wrong. And I think this is the one that gets cut off. But at the end, we can cut it off. I just want to make darn sure I don't steer you wrong. So let me go ahead and put this down on our template. We've got rid of all that, the two corners, these three pieces. And we've nixed off our little corners for those tabs. And I think this one comes off, but I'm not positive. Okay, this piece right here where we cut off that one square, this one right here, that's going to be the side of the box where we're going to cut our little holes. 
this little one here so the cap can go down and this little hole here okay so the candy can come out now the pieces that she used and i'm going to stick with the same ones they turn out the same was a one and three quarter inch circle punch and that's for the bottom so if you know this is the cover right here you know this is the bottom where the candy comes out Get that up in there. You don't have to go super high, but you're gonna to wanna to try to make that as central as you can. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm always off by a little bit and it's turned out just fine. And then, and actually I think we cut a slit there. I'll tell you in just a moment if that's right. All right, so on the top of that, that's where we're gonna put our other little thing so we can get our cover open. And that's gonna be a three quarter inch circle and that's this little teeny tiny one I have did I bring out another one if you have one that's like a grippy one that's way easier okay so this time I'm going to just try to center this one go halfway down or so and there we have it Pretty sure this one has to have a cut. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and before we put this all together, and by the way, this, this paper, no matter what you do, it just cracks. So you're gonna see white on this one, but that's okay. Go ahead and score down, burnish down all of your score marks so that as we put this down together, it's gonna go down, go together much easier. I'm sorry, I have those two last pieces that I'm just not sure about. I don't know if I just misunderstood when she did her video. Um, but yeah, I made like four or five of these. I just think they're really cute. You notice I only have two to show you, right? <laughs> I'm not perfect either, so we make mistakes. And that is okay. So this is the tippy top. And how she does it to put the box together is she turns this side down and then she glues this side on it. Right here, gluing this and then putting this straight down. The reason being is it's a lot easier to do it when it's a flat. And she'll tell you that too. Flat than trying to hold it up and going, okay, well, it's going to go like that. So, I mean, you get the gist, you know, it's not, it just doesn't work all that great. So, until we know... I really think this one is the one that we oh, I missed one let me, let me burnish that one I don't think we need to cut that one I think this one just pops over well we'll see let's go ahead and glue our pieces together first so the big long piece goes over this way and we're going to glue this edge okay down like this I'm just double checking guys Yeah, okay. Two more things we gotta do here. I'll make marks on here. This one that we have crossed off right here, that does need to come off. So as we have these down, lay it down so your top is this way and your bottom's this way and we're gonna cut this one right off, this one. So that one is coming off. It shows up. It shows it going, having some little slits in it. But I just want to make sure that. So you guys cut that off, right? So here's the one that's going to go down, and then this one needs to go down too. So right here, I have to add this into my drawing. This one right here needs to be cut. So I'm going to make that line. I'm going to put some little lines on it, meaning that you need to cut this. And I'll draw a little scissor. Okay. So right there, you have this little flap, and then you have this one. We're going to cut that line right there so that this all comes together at the end. So once we make another four or five, we'll be experts, right? <laughs> okay. Let's take this out of the way. Flip our side over. Okay. 
There we go. Because we should only have a little bit to glue here. That one down on that one. And then you can make all your lines line up. So use whatever glue you decide to do. This one, no matter what I do, it clogs up every time. Wet glue, dry glue. Um, right now I'm using the glitter glue because once it dries, that stuff does not move. So you know it's not going to come apart. So use a really good adhesive. Okay. Then that should hold apart. This bottom piece, now this is where we cut. We're going to glue these two together here and then we're going to cut off anything that hangs off the front. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is put my glue down here on the bottom and I'm going to glue it up to that top one so that holds the bottom together. Okay, and you should have your little hole there for the candy to fall out. And now right here, if you look, if you've got your paper didn't come out exactly straight, and you need to cut a little bit off across the front here. Mine looks to have actually worked out really well this time. But if not, just take your scissor and cut straight across and just cut a sliver off so you've got room there. Oh, I forgot to have you guys cut these. That's okay. We'll do them now. I found that using a craft knife for this works the best. On either side of this, we need a line, a little cut mark up the side here so that these can go in right there. So just go up the very, very edge. We definitely should have cut this um, ahead of time, but using the craft knife, this goes really, really easy. Just slit your craft knife right up the edge there. Go up about as far as you think this tab is and then slide the tab in. Now, do you see that mine won't fit? Mine's not exactly fitting. I'm just gonna put this right back in here and slide it up just gently. It'll go up a little bit bigger and then put that back in. And the reason being is if you make it too, too big, then they're not gonna stay. It's gonna get sloppy and then you'll be bummed because the door's gonna open up on you. Okay, I'm gonna try to do both of them at the same time now. Oh, there we go. This side wasn't quite high enough. I have to go up about two more millimeters. That ought to work. That ought to do her. Then slide those in. There we go. Okay. And then these are your, your slits. You don't have to glue these at all because you want to leave this open so you can put your candy in the top. And this should just slide right in here together. Catch on the front. Look, just like that. So there's two things. See, this paper cracks. I would suggest using a 100 pound thick white cardstock and then decorate the outside. I think that would work the very best. So you've got your little door here. That's where the candy comes out. Okay. And then this is where you put your candy inside and then you decorate it. One piece of paper, super easy, right? Not easy. You gotta really, really watch what you're doing on this one. It took me several tries. And even then I forgot to tell you about the, the slits, even though I have them drawn in. Here are our two little slits here. So if you wanna pause and take a picture of that and save it, that's well worth saving. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put in some little um, more precise drawings here and put cut the slit. And then there was one, yep, that part had to be cut and this part had to be cut off. So now this is exactly right. I just didn't write things out dark enough. All right, and so this is one that I made, like I said, heavy duty card stock. This holds up really well. I've got Skittles in this one. And so my top comes open and I can put my candy in. You don't wanna glue that shut unless it's something like a one-time gift and you want it to be throwaway. Um, it's super cute, right? It doesn't have to be Valentine's, but it's that time of year. So here's a Valentine one I did with a sparkly little bow and some sparkly paper. Um, I don't know exactly which way to put this paper to make sure that your pattern comes out like up and down. Mine ended up being side by side to side. You see how it's just that way. 
So keep that in mind if you're making one, excuse me, and you're making a pattern using pattern paper, that's different. What I would suggest is doing one like this in like white or a, you know, a solid color background and then decking it out. And I'm going to give you the um, dimensions for cutting those out. Okay. I even wrote them down because I knew I would forget. Now you have three sides. Okay. These two sides and this one, one, two, three, those big sides are th one and one and three quarter by three and a quarter. So one and three quarter by three and one quarter. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decorate this one to show you how these go, okay? I think I'm just gonna glitz this up. I'm gonna leave it pink and I'm gonna glitz it with some glitter paper that I have off to the side here. Ooh, look at that shiny. How are we doing for time? Oh good, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Get my two of my punches out of the way so I can do some cutting with you. Okay, so what did I say? Three of them at three and a quarter by one and three quarter. So I'm gonna cut the three and three quarter, three and three quarter first. So three and three quarter and then one and three quarter. All right, there's one. You know what, I don't need this anymore. Let me move this out of the way. Then I might be able to get my cutter in here. All right, and then another one and three quarter. That's two and one more at one and three quarter. And I'm going to screw these on right away and then we'll keep trucking. Again, heavy duty glue so you know it's not going to fall off. Uh oh. Three and one quarter. I think I went too much. Let me let that dry. Three and one quarter. Oh, I did. I did three and three quarters. It's three and one quarter, so I'm going to cut these down just a little bit. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> three and one quarter. So this guy. I can still put glue back on it, no big deal. I'll just chop a little piece off. Three and one quarter. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put it on the side. This will help sturdy your box up a little bit too if you just don't have any of that heavy cardstock. Adding paper is always a good thing. How cute. And wet adhesive gives you a second to move stuff, like mine just slid there. I still had a second to go over that. And this will be the last one. Leave me an emoji if you're crafting along with me. Thanks, Sherry Covell. Yeah, I mean, it was a little difficult for me to put this together, no lie. I made a couple of them. This is just not sticking, so I'm going to put in a little bit more glue. Give it a hold right on the corner. It's going to seem like you're practically cutting these little pieces off, but trust me, they hold up, they hold up pretty darn well. Okay, so that is those three pieces. And then what do I have on my list? For the front, I'm gonna close these in. 
Okay. One for the front that's two and a half by one and three quarter. Let's try this one. Two and a half by one and three quarter. One and three quarters. Oops. I'm not used to putting my cutter in frame, but it sure is nice to have that. So this portion is going to go up here, that part, and then you'll have to just put your little thing in there and recut that half circle. I'll see if I can get mine in there, otherwise I might have to use my, I might just have to use my uh, scissor and cut it out. And you can use the top of it to know where you want it to be. Deb, how have you been crafting all day? That's awesome. So I have two different, actually, I won't lie. I've got three different white card stocks now. Um, the one that I have some of is the um, Solar White Nina card stock. That is pretty much really comparable to the opaque white uh, white cardstock. Um, I'm thinking for a second because I was getting a 110 pound cardstock from um, it's Nina Exact Index that is not as heavy as the Nina Solar White. But I'm not giving that up because there are some projects that I need that thinner cardstock for because the opaque. The Opaque Digital and the Nina Solar White, they are both super heavy. I went out, I did a video on, on these kind of things, um, but it's super heavy. And so there's just certain things that I need that lighter cardstock for. And after I'm out of the Solar White, I will definitely be purchasing more of the Digital Opaque and sticking with that because it's a much cheaper price point. And it's the same type of glue. So the dispenser door this little piece on the bottom here is one and three quarter by a half. So I think I can still use the rest of this. Let me just check it out. One and three quarter. Okay, that's one and three quarter, and then we just need a half an inch. Um, I can't find my little green guillotine cutter. I'm so disappointed. I need to find that at some point. I need a little half inch here and it's really hard to figure that out on the other one. I need to go in a half. Oh my other one, my other cutter was just so much easier. I don't even know if I'm getting a half at this point. <laughs> Let's just double check it. Oh no, I cut it way off. I gotta I gotta start again, you guys. I think I'm gonna do the half inch first. Cause that's the hardest part to do. So let's try that. That looks pretty good. Half an inch, why am I getting this wrong today? By one and three quarter. Okay. Let's see if that works. One and three quarter. It did work. I got a little crooked of a thing because it's so tiny. So I'm just gonna cut that a little straighter. Well, that did work, but I'm gonna keep looking for that little green guillotine that I had because it's so much easier. So that's going to cover up our little door. And you can make it a little bit bigger too if you don't want that um, frame, but I like the frame. I think it's super cute. And then we need to cover the top yet. You could do the bottom too, but I'm not going to do the bottom. I'm just going to do the top. So if you want a top and a bottom, you just do two squares, one and three quarter by one and three quarter. So if you want to take down these mats, Pause and take down these measurements. Take a screenshot. Go ahead and do that. We're going to do one that's one and a quarter. No, one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So, Let's 
I gotta brush up on making these more difficult ones so I can bring more of them to you guys. I mean, it's not hard. It's just, you really gotta pay attention when you're making this kind. Always have extra paper on hand. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, let's glue this one down. Did someone say they were following along? And of course, yours isn't going to have the black marks on it either. So you won't have to do that. And so that's how that turned out. Cute. I'm going to go ahead and do the bow that I did on this one. It's just a matter of putting a couple of pieces through here. But I'm going to tell you, you got to really be careful making a bow on this with this stuff because it's hard to stick. It doesn't, it doesn't like to stick to, to stuff because it's it's uh, the glitter. It's got that funky feeling to it. So I need two of these. So I'm going to punch this one more time. And if you guys are like, whoa, that's cool. I don't have that bow maker. I'm almost positive there's one of these on the um, in the budget shop right now if you want to run over and grab it. I just have one. Unless it's been spoken for. I don't know. All right. I'm going to be using a little bit of glue. I'm also going to be using glue dots because those will really help. So here's my glue dots. So if you've never done one of these before, I'm going to show you how they how they get put together. This one I'm just going to take and kind of start getting it rolling so that it doesn't crack in half. It kind of actually makes a rounded bow. Hi, buddy. And then I'm going to use this glue because it's going on the inside, these two pieces. It's paper to paper. There's no, um, there's no glitter on the inside. So I'm just making a little loop. Okay, I'm gonna do two of those. Just a little dabble do ya. That was probably way too much. And I'm going to hold on to it. I'm just trying to catch up on the chats here. Yeah, we'd love to see that. Somebody's making a wobble card. So those are the two little bows. Okay. They're going to overlap. They're going to overlap like this. Um, these two are going to go on the back. And then these are going to go around. I think I only use one of these. You don't need both. Um, I would like to actually tape it or glue this. I don't know if it'll glue on this. Let's try this glue and see what happens. I used a glue dot last time and it just kept trying to move. So let's see if this glue will kick this glitter's butt. <laughs> People must be really busy this weekend. Only 20, 22 people watching this time. I know some people, they have to work Friday nights and stuff and they can't come. So, see this does not seem to be working. I might have to wipe it off and put a glue dot on there. Uh, hot glue will work as well, but you have to be careful with how much hot glue you add. I don't feel like messing with that, but hot glue would definitely work. Oh, well maybe it's going to work. Now it seems to be holding. All right. This one's going to go around it, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. And I'm going to put this down the middle. Now, I don't know if that's going to stay, but I'm hoping it will. There's my little thing. I'm just going to go ahead and squash that down with this ball and hold that there for a minute. Let my glue have a chance to grab on. So did any, let me go back up. Did anybody say that they were trying to make one of these today? I don't think so. Nobody's making one. Hey, Cindy. I'm 
I'm sorry if you came in and I missed you. I didn't say hi. So now one of them's gonna wrap around. You guys see, oh, see now it's falling apart. Yeah. I think we're gonna have to put a glue dot on there. That's all right, I got some here. Oh, I'm gonna have to flip it over. All right, glue dot we go. I need a fresh one. I had to flip it and put it on the dry side because it doesn't like that glue. I don't blame it. It's not supposed to stick. All right, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and use another glue dot here right in the middle. I just don't think the glue dots work all the best for this, but so here I have that little whoopsie doo. I have that piece that's wrapping around. So I'm going to put one over the top and put it on that glue dot. And then of course I'm going to have to put another glue dot on there for the next one. So let's go ahead and put that one down. See it's already starting to it's already starting to give, which is not what we want. Okay, so I made it all the way around. So that's our bow. And then these are going to hang off the sides like this. We don't want to see my crease, so we're going to do that. We're going to glue dot these guys together. Right in the middle. Right in the middle so they overlap. And then a glue dot on the top stick it to the other one. Ooh, I'm all stuck. I'm all stuck to stuff today. And we're going to put that down right in the middle there and hopefully, hopefully that stays together. All right. And then a couple more glue dots to make it stick to the box. That's what I ended up doing before. And then actually one of mine came apart. So I ended up gluing it after all. But you'll have to do whatever you have. I mean, I don't even know if you have the glitter paper. I don't know if you're gonna have, um, wanna use glue dots or, but this turned out pretty cool. You know what, I'm. it's kind of losing I can't really see it, so I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a belly band on this. I think it would be really cute. Okay. So again, some more glue dots, because I think this will look really cute. Belly band as if it's as it's not going to come off. It's just going to be a permanent belly band. Okay, so I wrapped it around one way, and then I'm going to wrap it around the other way. And then because this is the back of the box, and so we won't see that, we'll go ahead and glue that there, and just cut off the extra. We got pretty close. Pretty close there. You can put glue dots on the sides too, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that. And I'm gonna put my little bow right here in the middle. Oh cute. Look at that. Makes the front almost look like it's got drawers on it. <laughs> That's super cute. Alright, so we gotta put some candy in there. Let me pick up some of these pieces I won't need later. Let's put some candy in here. What should we put in here? This one is Chewy Nerds, Big Chewy Nerds. Oh, 
don't want to shove that down too much. Oh, I forgot to cut my little circle. That's why. I'm going to use this one. This one's a little bigger than what they suggested, but I should be able to get that in there a little bit. There we go. You see that? Because then you can just grab the front of that little flap. There we go. And then open up the little door and the candies come out. Yum, yum. You can always open it up and add more if need be. Fun stuff, you guys. Give me a thumbs up. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this. This was super fun. So again, one more time if you guys missed it. We made this one today. Super cute. Here's another little Valentine one. Where did our other one go? Ah, and this one's a little bit more retro. Really cute. 110 pound cardstock, really super solid. This, this is a little bit squishier because it's pattern paper. Same with this pink paper. It's kind of squishy. A little bit more held together because we papered the outside. That always helps. And I did a belly band. So that's super fun. One more time now, if you missed out and you want to see, take a picture of the measurements and then take a picture of all the little pieces that will cover your box if need be. So take some screenshots if you need it, stuff like that. All right, so I hope that I made a little bit more intermediate to advanced little box, dispenser, candy dispenser, treat dispenser, Valentine's Day um, project much easier and that you'll be able to make one yourself at home. Now, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, I'm at, at Quality Crafts. And if you haven't had a chance to jump over to TikTok, I'm gonna be putting in little videos in there, sh little short videos, like, I don't know, I think it has to be like, like about a minute, they'll be real short, of um, projects and things, not the whole thing, but maybe a list a little ditty of um, something super fun, and then you only have to watch a little short piece of it, but TikTok is a really fun place to just check that out, so if you go over to TikTok, I am at Quality Crafts, that way you can go ahead and click on the button and follow me and see a lot more little tidbits and fun stuff that I'll be doing over there. All right, if you have any questions, let us know. This was super fun. We do something like this every Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you need more, we do uh, one in 10 is a card in 10 minutes using your scraps. And then you get the card every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time as well. So two days, one time. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.